I'm Jordan Needham, this is Jham 3D, and we just might have to talk about the most fun add-on on Blender Market, the Population Crowd Simulation Add-on by B Production. This thing is crazy, it has so many creative possibilities and so much potential, I don't even know where to start. But <laughs> we have to start somewhere, so I'm gonna start by saying this. Shift day, add a plane scale this up oh shoot we got to make sure that you have installed the add-on first so just so you know when you install it do not unzip anything keep all the folders zipped up and you're gonna install the add-on just as you would install any other add-on go into edit preferences install and then you're gonna select the add-on and install the zip file once you have the add-on enabled you're gonna see these preferences and you're gonna to go to library path and then you're going to select the asset packs. Do not unzip them. I unzipped them, it led to problems. <laughs> Leave them zipped and press install pack. You're gonna do that for each of the packs depending on which version of this product you got. If you've got the 100% the pro version, you will have 100% of the population, and so you will have three asset packs. If you get the population light version, you will have 25% of the population. I'm not exactly sure how many packs you'll have, but it might not be three. If you get the studio version, you'll have 10 user seats with that version, but you'll also have, of course, 100% of the population and probably three asset packs. So now that you know how to install this, let's look at how to use it real quick. And then I'm gonna show you at the end my favorite features, how to use it. So, I mean, this add-on is very straightforward. That's what I love about it. You're gonna wanna find it through your list of add-ons on this tab over here. Now there's a ton of them on my side. Don't look at all of them. I'm sorry, it's so bad. And whenever I have any blender issues, I'm like, I should probably address these. The problem is I'll forget about some of the ones and my wallet will not. So what we wanna do is I'm gonna go to crowd right here. I'm gonna go to classic mode because classic mode is, it's classic. How can you ignore it? And then we're gonna select our characters. We have three different styles. We have casual, we have sport, we have business. And I'm gonna go ahead and select Arthur. I like the more colorful and saturated characters, the, the characters with the most colorful clothing. I think it works nicely with this great random color option. But honestly, I wouldn't think about this too much because at the end of the video, I'm showing you how to adjust these different colors. So choose whatever character you want. And now we can see that obviously I was doing a little bit of pre-recording, so I'm a little bit exposed there, but here's the thing. We can add in Arthur. Let's go add a new person. Let's drag this out a little bit so you can see what's going on. So this guy, he's gonna be doing, he gonna be, he gonna be doing high knees. We don't need everybody doing high knees, so let's go ahead and add another version of him, but this time he's gonna be doing the sexy pose, and let's add a new person. So we'll have Arthur doing high knees, and then maybe after that he's feeling good about himself, he's gonna be doing the sexy pose. After that, we're gonna add, you know, maybe, let's add some variety. We got sport in there, let's add business. I think, you know, Christopher means business, and I love the high, you know, colorful clothing. It works great with the random color feature. So let's go to communication. He means business. And with business, we need phone calls. The phone call animation or pose, where it at? Not under communication, where it at? Is it daily life? Man on the phone, walking. There you go. Now, I don't know. I, I would have thought that'd be in communication. However, it is in daily life, and daily life we use phones. So let's add that. Let's add one more character. Let's go to casual, and let's go to, let's go to Sandy. Why not? Let's add in some dancing. She's gonna be dancing. She's having a good old time. Let's add that person in. Now we have four different characters. Well, actually we have three different characters. One of them is the same guy with two different poses. So you can see the variety that we can get here. Before we press import, I wanna point out that you're gonna to want to eye drop the object that you want to be your crowd emitter, and then we'll press import. This might take a while, as always. I mean, it is importing a lot of data. And because these characters are pretty high quality, and that's something we'll get into in a little bit here, just be a little bit patient with it. Okay, you can see that our characters have imported, and when we take this plane and we scale it up, it's going to automatically be adding more characters to our crowd. You can see how much variety we're already getting with just a little bit. And here's the good thing. You get 100% of these characters, you'll have 48 different characters to choose from. So the variety that you're seeing here 
can be multiplied in mass. Not only that, when we go to render mode, you can see because of the random color feature, we have a bunch of beautiful different colors already going on. So classic mode is pretty straightforward. Be careful with it. Make sure you don't scale this up too much. It's going to slow stuff down, I promise you. Also, don't subdivide your plane too much. It's also going to make things way too dense. But if we go ahead and we click spacebar to play, we got um, people having a ball. And that's a good thing, we want that. Because just like these people are having a ball, we're gonna have a ball with this add-on with the next feature, which is the follow curve mode. By the way, when you're moving on to like a different mode or you wanna kind of start over, whatever it is, go ahead and shift select all your character collections, right click, delete hierarchy. This is gonna remove all of them. Now let's bring that back up by pressing N and let's go to follow curve. Follow curve is probably my favorite mode because we can do so much with it and have so much fun with it. Now in this one, you'll notice that walk and run are options available to us. Whereas in these other modes, walk and run, because of these modes having the characters stationary, walk and run are not really compatible with it. So if you're in those modes and you're like, what is this black? like a little box here why do i not have these options did it not install correctly because that's how what i was thinking and turns out no it's just that you need to be in follow curve mode that's how you activate the walk and run features and with these animations we can make our characters walk and run so just for the sake of variety let's go ahead and select different characters we're gonna go to audrey and we're gonna put her on let's go ahead and put her in fast walk add and let's go let's add uh, Robert and let's put him in run I think it's funny to watch a man in a business suit run I think that'd be great so we're gonna make him not jog but run and let's select one more because why not let's go ahead and go to sport and let's put Gus in there I love Gus because he got a bright saturated red shirt which just makes it really good again with the random color feature add him in here he's gonna be jogging and now when we press import again be patient wait a little bit you can see it brings us into edit mode and it's gonna have our draw tool enabled basically what this is telling us is that we can draw whatever kind of curve we want i don't even know what i'm drawing it's just scribble because it works that well you can just scribble and they're gonna follow this i'm not even looking at the screen i'm gonna press play and I know it's working. Oh, what's that? They need to go the other direction? Well, that's great because we can go and press this reverse option. Was it gonna make them go the other way? And perhaps this curve was not the greatest example, but that's because I drew a scribble. So let's go ahead and draw something like this. You can see what's going on here. We have our characters following this curve right here. By the way, if you wanna avoid kind of wacky curves what you can always do is make sure there's a surface for it to attach to so what i mean by that we have this plane here now i'm going to go into edit mode i'm going to delete these vertices and with surface enabled up here when we draw it'll make sure that our curve is drawing on top of that surface and not just kind of like going everywhere and if you want to make them go in circles like i did on my last project no problem let's go ahead and delete this and we'll add in shift a a circle we can scale this up sometimes I do get this bug it is kind of funny so if you're running into this issue basically it's putting a bunch of instances of a circle I believe in like really one small spot so what you're gonna want to do is scale it up and then you can see how that goes away but when we scale these all down they're just gonna be running into each other and whatnot. that so let's scale this up and now that's not as much of a problem if you're getting too many characters clipping running into each other you might want to decrease the count that there is because that is a problem. Um, however, it might not be so obvious in your render. So just make sure that you minimize that. Maybe you don't want it to be seen. Another way you can minimize that is by the spread width right here. Uh, obviously, the denser this is, the more likely you are to have instances or people running into each other. So just keep that in mind. When we put random start on, that's also going to change things because you can see here, we got a lot of collision happening and that's because they're all starting in the same spot. But when we put this back to the default, which is 400, it spreads them out along the circle or along the curve. Finally, let's talk about my favorite feature of this add-on, which is the single people mode. With the single person or single people mode, we have unlocked 48 different characters, which can be manually posed and used for whatever we want. And this is great because they're rigged. We can add these different poses to them. We can add different animations to them. We can make them run. We can make them walk. 
we can make them just be ambient characters which are standing around a little bit closer to the camera and you can see what I'm gonna do is show you the difference between the HD and the low poly characters so I'm gonna bring in Christopher I'm gonna put him at HD and I'm gonna import him okay this is HD Christopher so let's look at the low poly Christopher import him obviously in the same spot you can see the difference we have here obviously greater detail in the HD version and lower detail in the low poly version and the low poly version I believe is automatically used in your crowd simulation so if you're not getting enough detail you might want to bring in some manual single people closer to the camera so that you have greater detail so not only is the model higher poly but the textures are also better I mean a low poly itself honestly looks pretty good however on the HD model the textures go up to 8k which is crazy and we can also change the color of our random color that's going on here. Let's go to the shader editor and tab into this. You can see what's happening is our random object info is selecting, you know, from this color ramp here and this color ramp here. So if we find a color which it is already uh, selecting, we can actually change that color manually. Uh, that was jeans. I should have been on shirt right here. I can change manually change the color of his shirt or we can also go to the hue and change it that way or we can change the color of his jeans which I believe are the green ones right here which one is it I'm not exactly sure which one is selected there we go we can manually select it and change it here so you can actually change this color palette to be whatever you want and you can use these hue saturation nodes as well not only that but they also have subsurface scattering on these characters which is something i haven't seen out of a asset pack for a crowd simulation before so these really are really high quality textures and scans which result in pretty good results and allow you to use these characters for so many different things it doesn't just have to be a crowd simulation now you have 48 different characters which you can use however you want i'm jordan needham this has been jham 3d and i hope you guys like this add-on that's the population crowd simulation add-on by B Production. It is going on sale soon for the winter sale, so you might want to go take a look at it on Blender Market.